The rate of force development is simply how fast an athlete can develop force, which is sometimes referred to as explosive strength. Increasing the rate of force development, whilst reducing the time which peak rate of force development occurs, will result in a left and upward shift in the force time curve, meaning greater forces can be produced in a shorter period of time. Greater muscular strength is strongly associated with an improved rate of force development and an improved ability to jump, sprint and change direction. Stronger athletes also produce superior performances during sport specific tasks and are also less likely to get injured. The article published in the journal Sports Medicine titled The Importance of Muscular Strength in Athletic Performance by Timothy Suchamel and colleagues reviewed the literature that examined the influence of muscular strength on various factors associated with athletic performance and in doing so put forward a model based on the theoretical relationship between relative back squat strength and performance capabilities. Within the model there are three primary strength phases included strength deficit, strength association and strength reserve. This presentation, brought to you by Talking Sports Science, will provide a summary of their model. Firstly, after approximately five years of structured strength training, suggested relative strength levels for the back squat should be at a minimum of 0.7 for 11 to 12 year olds, 1.5 for 13 to 15 year olds and 2.0 for 16 to 19 year olds. Starting off with the strength deficit phase, this may be the shortest phase based on the motor learning capacity of the individual. Novice athletes within this phase are often going through stages of physical literacy, especially if they have not been previously exposed to strength training. Here, although an individual's strength is improving, they may not be able to exploit their levels of strength and translate them into positive sport performance benefits. This phase will ultimately continue until the individual becomes competent with the strength training exercise. As they get stronger, they will then enter the strength association phase, where increases in strength now often directly translates to improved performance. This phase is characterized by a nearly linear relationship between relative strength and performance capability. The duration of this phase may be based primarily on two physiological mechanisms, including neuromuscular adaptations and muscle cross-sectional area, or architectural changes that occur as a result of regular strength training. Here, further increases in maximum strength, combined with central factors, the specificity of the task, and the coordination of multiple joints, enhance an individual's ability to increase muscular performance. And for athletes who reach the strength reserve phase, they will have dramatically improved their ability to produce force and may continue to gain relative strength. However, the direct benefits to performance may not be as substantial as the window of adaptation for further strength gains reduces. Therefore, once a specific standard of strength has been achieved, for example, being able to back squat at least twice your body mass, the focus can then shift towards rate of force development training. This does not mean individuals should not seek to continue to improve their strength, rather it's recommended to focus more on strength maintenance, while placing more emphasis on rate of force development and speed adaptations. And that concludes the three strength phases of the model that is based on the back squat. One of the key recommendations from the article is to implement long term training strategies that promote the greatest muscular strength within the context of the sport. And that concludes this presentation. As always, go and check out the full article. The link is in the description. And thanks for listening, folks. See you next time.